Hi friends! Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of May. Hey y'all, editing Jessica here. I wanted to take a moment to discuss the current Black Lives Matter movement that is going on in the United States and across the entire world. I feel like I have my largest platform is YouTube. I do have, I've been very active on my Twitter account and somewhat active on my Instagram account about it. My Instagram account is my lowest amount of followers. My Twitter is second. Uh, but I have like triple the amount of subscribers on YouTube as I do on either of those platforms. So it felt like not announcing anything here was very disingenuous to how I feel. I wanted to just kind of pop this into a video that I had pre-filmed. I haven't posted anything for the, about the past week and a half. I've had stuff filmed for both this channel and for my planner channel, but haven't felt like it was the right time to post anything. And I wasn't really sure if I was going to go back to like regularly scheduled programming. I recently watched a video from video influencers where they had a couple of guests on the live and they were discussing what and if you should be posting right now. And one of the main things that I took from that is that it is important for us to be hearing the black voices right now and for us to see all the police brutality and everything the racism and everything that has been going on recently but it's also important for people to have regular content so that they can kind of have a place where they can step back from that to kind of have that refill the well moment so that they can go back out and do what they're doing on the streets so taking that note and taking the note that part of allyship right now is just being genuine and sharing the information that needs to be shared so i will be in the foreseeable future anything that i'm posting on my youtube channel both my main channel and my planner channel i will be linking in the description box as well as in the pinned comment some creators that you can check out that have a lot to say right now, some petitions that you can sign, places you can donate to. There will be a lot of educational links, everything that you need to know about how to educate yourself on racism in this country and what you can do to help prevent it in the future and to help make the change that needs to be made. All of that will be down below. I will not be promoting anything right now as far as like I won't be posting to Twitter or Instagram like hey my video is up. That was the other thing that I took away from that conversation was post don't promote. So post what your regular content is and the people who need to find it will find it and don't promote it because what you should be promoting is the Black Lives Matter movement. So that is what I'm going to be doing. If you are someone who is staying silent because you're afraid of saying the wrong thing. I want you to know that that's not enough. If you are someone who is staying silent because you feel like it is disingenuous to your platform or you're afraid of what people might take away from what you have to say, A, don't be afraid to say anything because you should be. Now is the time. Probably been the time for a long time, but now's the time. And also, if you're afraid of saying the wrong thing, what I will say to you is, I kind of talked about this on my Twitter and had a giant Twitter thread about it. People of color and Blacks are not asking us to be perfect, but what they want us to do is to listen and to hear them and to see them and to see that their struggles are real and to grow from that and to educate ourselves. Please do not ask a Black person to educate you on racism in America. That's not their job. Don't do it. There are some of them out there who are, and blessed be to those who are, because you're taking on our, ra our racist bullshit and trying to help us better ourselves. And I thank you for that. We need to educate each other and we need to hold each other accountable and we need to do better and to stop being silent. The TDLR of all of it is Black Lives Matter. If you're an asshole who responds to that, all lives matter, please get the fuck out. Again, I will be back to posting regularly scheduled content, but I will be leaving information and links in the description box as well as in the pinned comments so that you can find the things that you need to find. I hope that those of you who need a moment away from the brutality of social media right now can get that from this channel and from my planner channel and I hope that you will join us in the effort to fight systemic racism in the United States and in the world and that everyone is staying safe out there. And for those of you who are in the streets and who are fighting the good fight, I, I thank you. And for everyone out there who has already been doing all of these things and doesn't need my links, thank you. And Fitz thanks you as well.
In the month of May, I read seven books for a total of 2,253 pages. I did have a DNF this month. I read about the first 20-ish pages of Heart of Iron by Ashley Pawson. It is not a book that I owned. I was reading it for a book club and I just decided that it just wasn't for me. As always, I will be listing these from the lowest rated to the highest rated and let's get started. The first we're going to talk about is a series. It is the Summer Series by Jenny Han including The Summer I Turned Pretty, which I gave a 2.75 out of 5 stars. It's Not Summer Without You, which I gave a 3.25 out of 5. And We'll Always Have Summer, which I gave a 2.5 out of 5. I read the series over the weekend edition of the Contemporary Athon. So if you want more information about what these are and how I felt about them, you can find all of that information there. I will link it in the description box below as well as in the cards. Um, and I want to go over them again, so hey. Next is Lullaby by Amanda Hawking. This is the second book in the Water Song series. It follows Gemma and Harper as they try to discover about these murders that are going on in their town, these really creepy girls who everyone seems to kind of fawn over yet are afraid of and it involves sirens and some really weird interesting things. I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. As I said last month when I read Wake, which was the first book in the series, Amanda Hawking is an auto buy author for me. I have read a ton of her books. Um, with book two, I'm still not a huge fan of Gemma and Alex, but I love Harper and Daniel. They are definitely the highlight of the series for me so far. I really love Hawking's storytelling and there was definitely a part in this where Gemma discusses the difference between being like a mythical creature that is a monster and just being a monstrous person and how those are two different things and it kind of applies being evil into the real world. So it's that parallel that you get even though this is technically a fantasy story. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Next is Force of Nature by Jane Harper. This is the second book in the Aaron Falk series. The series follows Aaron Falk who is a, an investigator for I believe it's like money forensics so he tracks money to try to solve crimes. The books are set in Australia. The first book is The Dry. Um, which I read earlier this year. Really the only thing that is carried over from book one into book two is Aaron Falk. The setting is completely different. The characters are all different. There's not like a single solitary person that is the same in both books except for Aaron himself. The thing that I love about Jane Harper's writing is the way that she writes the environment into the story. It is very much as if the environment is its own character. Unlike the first book, this one was harder for me to figure out the mystery aspect of it. I did kind of keep guessing throughout the entire novel up until the point where the main character starts to kind of figure out what was going on. That's I was kind of figuring it out with him versus in the first book where I kind of knew I had a pretty good idea of what was going on the whole time. This one it was there was enough like red herrings and just possible outcomes that I spent a good part of it like kind of theorizing in my head what could have happened and I mean was one of my theories correct? Yes but there wasn't really any way for me to know that until there was like actual solid evidence found because there were so many theories that were possible. And I really liked that aspect of it because sometimes mysteries for me are really easy to guess and this one wasn't. And I do plan to read more by Jane in the future. Next is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. And this book is a dual timeline. It follows a group of students from an artistic school where they are studying Shakespeare and acting and there are six of them and it follows them both in college and then a decade later where one of the students was killed and one of them was blamed for the murder and you're figuring out how the story actually happened throughout the, the book. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I wasn't sure about the Shakespeare aspect of this because I was never really a huge fan of Shakespeare in school but I think reading this gave me a better understanding of why people love Shakespeare the way that they do and how it can apply to it. Like I think I learned more about Shakespeare and its importance in literature and in creating modern day storytelling from this book than I ever learned in an English class. 
So there's that. I love that the characters were very real, very intense, very flawed. They all have their issues that you learn about throughout the story and they all have these things that they kind of bring together to make the story important. And on top of that you really fall for these characters and you want them to have that happily ever after story that you just know with it being a Shakespeare is not going to happen because Shakespeare is almost always a tragedy. Pretty early on in this book I had a pretty good idea of who was going to be the one who died and who was going to be the killer and I was correct but I'm not sure that if this that was supposed to be a mystery. I don't know if it was supposed to be a mystery as to who died and who did the killing versus how it happened and also I think it was more about the differences in how we all deal with being broken and kind of pieced back together because it shows so many different ways that each of the six characters broke over time and how the murder and the subsequent trying to figure out what had happened, how that broke each person individually and how that continued to break them as they had been a decade on and how it affected each of them. So I'm not sure if it was really truly a mystery or if it was more of like an introspective look at the human condition. But either way, I really enjoyed it. And the final book that I read was This Coven Won't Break by Isabel Sterling. This is the sequel to These Witches Don't Burn. The series follows Hannah who is an elemental witch. In her world there are three different types of witches, elementals, casters, and blood witches. And there are also what in the real world we would consider like a modern day Wiccan, Pagan. Those are two different types of things. You know what I mean? Like our modern day magic also exists in this world. Okay series follows Hannah as she is, an, as I said, an elemental witch and the real world is not supposed to know about these witches and yet there are people that start dying at these things that are going on in town and so at the risk of the elementals and the other witches being discovered, Hannah has to kind of pull her friend group together and deal with her ex-girlfriend in order to try to solve the murders and figure out what's going on in the town. Also just kind of deal with life and how things can happen. One of the things I loved about this series as a whole and especially in book two is just the way that the worlds were put together. So the elemental caster and blood witch type of life built in with our actual modern day type magic. The way that that world is kind of meshed together was very interesting. I enjoy seeing that in books. There was a graveyard scene in this book that had me absolutely distraught, sobbing while I was reading it. Sometimes seeing characters in their worst moments and watching them break can absolutely break you as well. And that is strangely one of my favorite things to see in books. I don't know why. And you know, I said it, almost all of last year. There were so many books that I read last year that I was just hoping would be the witchy book that I needed and I never found that last year. But these two definitely were the witchy books that I was looking for all of 2019. To be fair, These Witches Don't Burn came out in 2019. I just didn't read it and that's on me. Did I say I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars? If I didn't, I gave it a 4.75 out of 5 stars. So that is my wrap up for this month. Those are all of the lovely books that I read outside of the one that I read via audio. If you would like to discuss any of these books, have any comments, questions, concerns, all of that will be linked in the description box below, as well as my full reviews on Goodreads will be down there as well. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, and book related videos on Mondays and Wednesdays, bonus videos on the weekends. If you don't already know, I have also recently started a planner channel. So all of my planner content will be on a separate channel from now on. So if you are interested in that, that will be linked down below as well. And if you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you subscribe to both channels. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!